I'm just back from my annual vacation here. Boa Vista off the West African coast, one of the 10 volcanic islands that make up the island nation of the Republic of Cabo Verde. Colorful buildings, rolling sand dunes, pristine sandy white beaches, crystal clear waters, and endless spectacular sunsets. A developing country poor in natural resources, it is largely dependent on its rapid development of tourism for economic growth. Mega resorts offer luxury accommodation 24-7, or you can eat food and drinks, entertainment activities and a stress-free getaway. But I began to wonder after all of my efforts these last years to fight for climate justice and to create climate awareness, have I just undone all of my good and committed a climate sin? Well, yes and no, it's complicated. Hey everyone, I'm Greg and welcome to this episode of Greg the Artivist, a channel dedicated to transforming the dystopian outlook we have for the future when talking about our changing climate to a positive narrative of the incredible opportunities presented to us to help us create a better world for all life. And I'm hoping that along the way, I can inspire you to get involved. So if this sounds interesting to you, then be sure to hit that subscribe button now and click on that bell for future updates. So let's go back to Cabo Verde and questioning, have I committed a climate sin? But be sure to stick around to the end of this video because this conversation takes a twist you don't wanna miss. We all deserve a holiday, right? So why do I feel so bad about my choice? Well, for starters, you know, flying, as we know, certainly isn't helping to reduce global emissions. And as I slid down the water slides for the 100th time, like some overexcitable child, to have some fun and not think about the climate emergency for a couple of hours, I still caught myself questioning, you know, what have I done? And I emphasis on the I here. You know, a lot of people ask me, what can I do about climate change? And sure, there are so many individual and important actions we can take, but I like to play devil's advocate to this question and respond with a question of my own. Are you, or even I, responsible? Which may surprise some people, and no, this is not the twist that's still yet to come. For many of us, we inherently care about the planet and we want to jump up and say, well, what can I do about the climate emergency? And there is so much hanging on the I, this huge weight of personal ownership. And this personal ownership has not been helped by us being told over the years that you or I are personally responsible for the climate change. And I'll come back to that in part two. The right question we should be asking is what can we do about it and more so what should they be doing about it? You see, this I creates part of the problem in getting people to take action. Climate change is a, you know, a big, daunting and complex responsibility for anyone to take on. And by focusing on this I at one point or another, it has led us all to question ourselves, well, you know, does what I do even matter? So first things first, I would like to rephrase the question, what can I do, to a more relevant question. Does my personal carbon footprint matter? To which, like I said at the beginning of my video, yes and no. The answer simply isn't black or white. But let me try and explain. If we were all to take action together by reducing our carbon footprints as much as we possibly can, could this help stop the climate emergency? Several years ago, a campaign discovered that if 1 billion middle-class people made all the changes they could to reduce their carbon footprints, it would reduce the impact by one-fifth, which is certainly nothing to turn our nose up at. But getting 1 billion people to do anything, as we know, is highly difficult, unless, of course, it's confining us to our homes during a pandemic. And furthermore, there's the reality of different situations that each of us are individually in, and therefore the choices that we can make. Factors like price, availability, our geographic location, or even the current technology that exists often leaves us in a situation to make bad decisions for the climate as we have limited choices. Not everyone can afford to put solar panels on the roof, install double or triple glazed windows, or even buy an electric car. And some people, like myself, have family that are 1,600 kilometers away in Australia. You know, will I ever be able to see them again? But still, what is this twist that I talked about in the intro? Well, first, let's have a quick break. These videos simply would not be possible without your support. 
Liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing are all great ways to help the YouTube algorithm recognize that I exist on their platform and therefore share my content with other like-minded people. But these videos also come at a cost from music licensing, imaging licensing, software licensing, advertising and marketing, to the huge amount of time and effort that goes into their production. But you can show your support by using the thanks button below this video. All of my videos are currently self-funded, so every donation, no matter how small, goes a long way to help me keep improving and producing high quality content that of course is greatly appreciated, thank you. So earlier on I talked about the personal feelings of ownership for climate change and how this feeling has not been helped by us being led to believe that we as consumers are personally responsible. And I asked earlier, does our carbon footprint matter? Now we all know and have heard about the concept of the carbon footprint now for many years. But where does this concept actually come from? Is it the climate scientists, the environmental groups, the non-profits, or even our governments? Well, you would be right in thinking so, as they have all adapted to the carbon footprint and talk about it. But no, it doesn't originate here. And this is the twist you've been waiting for, and the answer might just infuriate you. It turns out the concept of the carbon footprint, the measurement that we use for personal impact, was actually the brainchild of an advertising firm working for no other than our so-called friendly planet concern mates in fossil fuels. Yep, you heard me right, yet another dirty manipulative secret of the fossil fuel industry comes to light, and in this case it's BP. In a way for BP to shift climate responsibility onto you or I as the consumer, and rather than taking the responsibility themselves as the producer, BP is now famously recorded in history for its huge PR campaigns in the early 2000s of promoting the concept of the carbon footprint. So, simply put, it was Big Oil who coined carbon footprints to blame us for their greed, to distract us from them, and to keep their big bucks rolling in. Now, I'm not negating responsibility as individuals entirely here on fossil fuels. We all do have a responsibility. The thing is, some of us are more responsible than others because consumers like you and I are not all equal and inequality must play a huge role in our climate discussions. And least we forget the average person like you or I are really not the problem here. The highest admitters are the wealthy with more consumer power. And the UN found out that the wealthiest 1% of people, and that's individuals who earn over $109,000 per year, contribute twice as much to climate change than around 3.5 billion people. So by understanding the games of the fossil fuel industry have been playing, along with the admissions of the wealthiest, they must be held accountable and take responsibility. I would really love to hear your thoughts on this, so please do drop them in the comment box below. But as for us, we have to be realistic about the situation that we're in, financially or otherwise, and people like us have to stop being made to feel guilty for wanting to live our lives in the society that we live. And the way for us to solve this seemingly endless uh, conundrum that we find ourselves as individuals in is to collectively demand our governments to create solutions and even legislations for new ways for business and industry to operate. And I focus on the collective here. After all, it's the wealthiest and the fossil fuel industry who have far more money and power than us to take individual action to stop them. But collectively, we're able to shift the power of balance in our favor. Now again, today's episode is not to excuse our choices. You know, people who are struggling to simply keep a roof over their head and to pay their bills to survive are less likely to be able to make better choices for the climate because of the reality of their situation. So when people ask me, what can I do? I like to remind them, we just all need to be realistic and simply make the best choices for climate that we can make. You know, we all have the ability to make choice which alone cost us nothing. But more importantly, we need to stand together collectively against the likes of fossil fuel companies and the wealthy. 
And another thing that costs us nothing is our voice. You know, we must use our voice to vote and demand our governments take action. So as for me, could have I made a better choice for my vacation for the climate? Well, simply put, yes. You know, I was fortunate enough to have the money to be able to go on a holiday. And I guess I could have made a better choice by taking a train for a winter vacation here in Europe, rather than flying to the beautiful island nation of Cabo Verde for a summer vacation in winter. And therefore, was my choice a bad one, worth feeling guilty over and not really being able to enjoy my holiday? Well, no, because I'm not a high admitter. This was my only flight in a year. I became vegetarian three years ago. I take many other personal actions for climate change as well as reducing my carbon footprint. On that note, please leave your comments on today's video and also what you would like to see in the future on the channel in the comment box below. And if you enjoyed the video today, then please do give it a thumbs up. And again, please subscribe to the channel and click on that bell for future updates. So please take care and remember, whether or not you believe in climate change or that it will impact you in your lifetime, decisions are being made right now that will impact you one way or another. So please join in on the conversation to help us shape a better future for all life. I'll see you next time.